So, hi everyone. Welcome to another coffee chat. Cheers. Today, we are going to do just like a little catch-up sesh. I want to chat with you guys about what's going on in my life, um, what's coming up for us, and then also answer some of your guys' questions and topics you guys wanted me to cover. That's what we're going to do, and I'm going to get ready with you as well. So, I hope... You're here for that, I'm excited. So I also wanted to take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is Ritual. Ritual is the multivitamin that I've been taking for years now. Tyler takes as well, my daughter Genevieve takes, and when I was pregnant, I took their prenatal, and then afterwards, I took their postnatal vitamin. I love this multivitamin company. So if you've never heard of Ritual, it is clinically backed, and it's formulated with key high-quality nutrients that will help fill common dietary gaps. Plus, it's made to support foundational health, so brain and bone health, blood building, antioxidant support. So the one I'm taking currently is the Essential for Women 18 Plus. I also love that it's traceable. You can pop on Ritual's site and see exactly what is in the vitamins, why it's in there, where it's sourced from, and I just feel like that level of transparency is really rare within the vitamin world, so I personally really like that. Plus, their delayed release capsule design is really gentle on an empty stomach, which I really, really appreciate, and it's designed to be dissolved later in the small intestine, which is actually an ideal place for absorbing nutrients. That was something new I learned. <laughs> And of course I love that it's delivered to my door each month. It is so easy. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to remember to add it to my grocery list and pick it up next time. It's there ready for me when I'm ready for it. <laughs> And I've actually made a really good habit of taking my multivitamin every night. That I started doing daily a few years ago and I really feel like it's made a difference. But it's also vegan friendly, it is non-GMO project verified, it is gluten free, it is major allergen free. And as I mentioned earlier, they have a multivitamin for pretty much everyone in your household. Um, if you click on there, I'll show you right now all of the different options they have. Tyler takes the essential for men. Genevieve takes the kids multivitamin, and of course I take the essential for women. So if you want to check out Ritual for yourself and maybe start a daily ritual you can feel really good about, you can get 20% off your first month by going to ritual.com slash 20jbrawn and use code 20jbrawn at checkout. I'll have the link and code right at the top of the description box for you guys. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring this part of the video. So now, let's chat. So I wanted to try out this, there it is, the Flower Beauty Skin Smoothie Radiant Glow Primer. I bought this actually a while ago, but I hadn't tried it. And it feels, just kind of swatching it, it feels really lightweight, like really thin, which is nice because I always say this, but anytime I'm putting on a glowy primer in addition to other stuff, skincare, SPF, etc., you just start to feel like you have so many layers on your skin. So when you can put something on that's glowy, that's really thin, I'm all about it. That's why I like the Say Glowy Super Gel. So I, oh no, I need SPF first, sorry. I'm gonna throw on the Kosas Dream Beam. I'm still really liking this. It's so pricey for what it is, but there's something about it I like. It wears really well underneath makeup, but I just, I don't know, I really like it. I've been wearing it alone a lot too, just as like a solo SPF when I'm not wearing makeup for the day. And even though Kosas says it's not a tinted SPF, it just has this like kind of perfecting quality where it just makes everything look a little bit more, I don't know, just a little bit better. I have Moana song stuck in my head. <laughs> so I'm gonna wait a minute for this to sink in and we'll start chatting first before I put this on because I don't wanna, I just feel like this needs a minute. This question, we're gonna start really juicy. I have never been asked this. And I can't stop thinking about it. One of you guys asked, do you ever get tired of having to provide links for everything, even your clothes? Whew. This is kind of a, an interesting question because one thing to keep in mind is, of course, this is my job. This is not a secret. This is not, you know, so to pull back the curtain a bit, we all know this is my job. And so this is how I make money. And so obviously I make money from filming videos. I obviously make money from sponsorships. But one of the um, ways I make money is through linking things. And so that could be called referral links. It could be called, be called affiliate links. But I don't think anymore that's like some big secret or anything. And I think generally most people understand it. But if you don't, just a quick, because I know I've got all ages watching me, all generations, and some people that aren't. Some of you guys have been watching these kinds of videos and content creators for a long time and some of you guys are still new to it. So if you are new to it, affiliate linking, referral links, that basically means most of the time someone you watch has links in their description box or maybe on their Instagram story 
And oftentimes, I would say most of the time, that link is an affiliate link, meaning if you click on it and you eventually buy something from that link, you whether you buy that thing or not, a lot of times you can click on it and then it'll take you to wherever. And if you buy other things, sometimes, depending, it depends on a lot of factors, sometimes that can be credited to that creator. And so we would get a split of the commission or like a percentage, I should say. It's usually a pretty low percentage, <laughs> but it's always nice if you did buy something based on what someone recommended to you and it's a creator you love and trust, it's nice to go back. Like I try to be really good about, if I heard about it from someone and I'm about to buy it, I go back and click the link and make sure, you know, as far as I can that they're getting credited for that because I'm like, you know, they're the reason I heard of it. They're the reason I want it. So I, I try to be good about that, but that's the whole idea behind it. And so every, like I use multiple different versions of it. Like Amazon has their own linking stuff. I use a couple other ones for like various sites and they all do things differently. So I'm gonna throw on the Clinique Moisture Surge. I have never tried this. I bought this during one of those sales and I was really excited. I think it was the Ulta sale. It's a tinted moisturizer. I think this is a little light for me, but we're just gonna try it. I think I'm gonna blend it in with my fingers first because, ooh, it has a little more coverage than I think I expected. Ooh, actually the shade match might not be bad at all. It has some SPF to it as well, SPF 25. But sometimes products like this, BB creams, tinted moisturizers can be best applied with your hands. Just the warmth of your hands. Hard to talk and do this. I feel like I need to focus. <laughs> what do we think? I feel like that looks pretty nice. I mean, I've tried a lot of tinted moisturizers. It definitely had a little more coverage than I was expecting, which is nice. And definitely with your fingers is gonna be the way, like that versus a sponge. A sponge is really gonna shear it out. Sometimes I'll do it with my fingers and then take the sponge at the end and kind of tap it in. I don't feel like I really need to. I feel like this blended in really nicely and it looks healthy. That looks nice. Hmm, I'll keep playing with that. If you're curious, I have the shade Universal Very Light and that seems to be like almost a perfect shade match. So do I get tired having to link everything? I mean, it's part of my job. So even if I did like from time to time feel like, oh my gosh, it's, it's kind of like, well, if I were teaching, I have to lesson plan, I have to make copies, I have to prep, I have to actually teach, I have to do conferences. So it's just a part of my job. So yeah, there are days where I'm like, oh, I don't really feel like making these links, but A, it's worth it because it is a part of my job and it's at least another additional stream of income because things can be very unpredictable. My YouTube video checks can vary wildly month to month. So it's really hard to predict how much I'm making month to month based on that. So it's nice to have other streams of income, even if they're not as much or even close to as much, but it's really nice to have that and know that that's something I am in control of. If I make links, I will maybe make money. If I don't make links, do you know what I mean? So there are some times where I feel, I told Tyler this, this was probably a year ago. I had this realization that I really struggle with owning, like take clothing, for example. If I thrift something, which I love going to thrift shops, Goodwill, et cetera, ThreadUp is a really good one online, but it's so hard because I will constantly, it's usually something that I fell in love with and a lot of you guys all wear it in a video and I'll get question after question after question where it's from, provide a link, or if I'm, Instagram stories are the worst culprits. Um, and it stinks because I can't link it, right? So it sounds silly, I know, and I'm, I still thrift and I still do all that, but my point is, you know, it's just one of those things that's weird about my job that I have to even think about that, like, oh, what, well, I won't be able to link this. Like, I'll find cute clothes at Meijer, and that's just like a superstore near me, and I'm like, I definitely can't link this. Like, you guys can't find this anywhere <laughs> unless you have a Meijer near you. But I mean, that's like a small, just silly thing that is something that crosses my mind that people that know, <laughs> allergies when you have like the drainage can make me cough. I know a lot of people, <clears throat> it was no joke, man. That one like took me out for a minute. Okay, we are back. I think we're good. <laughs> I used to like when I was teaching, I know I've told this story before, but when I was teaching and we would do like the standardized testing, I always ended up having a coughing fit. So I always made sure whether I was sick or not, made sure I had cough drops in there, my water bottle, easy to access, like Every time, it's like the times when you need to be the quietest and least distracting, somehow that's when it happens. It always used to happen to me as a kid in church too. So moving on from that subject matter, I hope none of that came as like complaining because it's not. It's just, I, I like being upfront with you. I like pulling the curtain back and sharing what it is like to do what I do because it is interesting. And I mean, I feel like if I didn't do this, I would be curious about how some of that stuff worked and how people feel about certain things. Anyway, okay. 
I love this question too. How do you feel less guilty when you take a break? <laughs> it's the girl named Becca and she said, Jessica, I love you. I love you too, girl. Um, okay. So one book that I read that really transformed the way I thought about taking breaks. And I don't mean just like during the day, I mean like taking a week off or, you know, actually unwinding on the weekend and not being productive. So it's not just taking a break from work, but taking a break from housework too, or whatever that looks like for you. The book was called Rest. And I just really liked it because it provided some scientific explanation as to why taking a break is actually essential for humans. And um, yeah, I, it just, it was one of those like really eye-opening books that I should probably read every four or five years. If you have any books on that topic that you would recommend beyond that one, let me know in a comment because I would like to read. It's been a year or two since I read that and I'm like, I feel like I need another another go at it, but maybe read another book. So let me know if you have any recommendations. But that was such a good book to read to really change your viewpoint on it. And it helped me with the guilt. I think, especially when you're a parent and you're like, if you're taking a break and you're like, oh my gosh, I've got laundry I need to do and I've got to bake this for this school function. And that's not really happening to me right now, but I imagine that happening in the future. Oh, there's a bake sale. There's always a bake sale. Anyway, um, you know, oh, I need to get the dishes done or I need to prep dinner. But being able to unguiltily take those breaks from all of it and maybe just spend time with your kids or spend time with yourself, go read and lay in your hammock. That's what I would love to go do right now and not feel guilty about it, not feel guilty about it. So definitely read that book. If you're in that zone, parent or not, because this is not geared towards parents, it's geared towards humans of all kinds, all of us, definitely go give that one a read. So by the way, that was the Bobbi Brown stick concealer and that declutter I just did this is one that I like, but I typically like the pot one from Bobbi Brown better, but this is really nice. I just feel like the pot one covers even more, but I'm gonna throw on the Neutrogena Radiant Cream Concealer on kind of like these zones. This is a nice drugstore concealer. I'm falling more and more in love with it the more I use it. So some life updates and then I'll answer some more questions. Actually, I wanna let that get tacky for a sec. So I've gotten a lot of questions about like, are you traveling this summer? Like, are you doing anything exciting? So we are, <laughs> Our intention was to actually kind of lay low this summer and just enjoy, you know, our neighborhood pool and like do things around here, maybe do little outings, um, enjoy our backyard that we love, enjoy our bonfire pit, those kinds of things. But then we started, <laughs> then we started booking things. No, um, really we're not doing any big, big travel. We have some stuff coming up like right now. Um, I might be gone or home by then, but we are doing a short road trip to Michigan. We leave tomorrow. And then, and that's a family thing. It's gonna be super nice and hopefully relaxing. But then a few days after that, we are actually going on the Disney Wish, which is Disney's newest cruise ship. And I cannot wait. Um, I have heard it is amazing. I'm intentionally not looking at <laughs> too much about it other than like I booked like one of the nice dinners there and I booked a massage for me and a massage for Tyler while the kids are in the like kids club there. Gigi, by the way, the Disney cruise ships have like their kids club and it is really cool. Like it blows all other kids clubs on other cruise ships out of the water. She loved it and she is someone that is very, especially back when we did it the last time, she was very nervous about being left there. She is so gung-ho about it this time because they have so many different things and so many crafts and movies and activities and characters will come in there and read a story. Like I think she went to an Elsa story time where Elsa herself was there reading a story. It was amazing. Anyway, so it's a really short cruise. It's only a few nights, but I am very excited about that. Um, and this is actually one of the only times usually we'll flank a Disney cruise with some days in the parks before or after. But since we were just there, we were like, let's, we're kind of taking a break because we have some other Disney plans in the future. But this summer, Tyler and I are going on a just me and him trip. It'll be like three or four nights, so nothing crazy long. And I cannot wait. We're going to New York to spend a few days and just he and I reconnect. It's really hard. And you guys know if you have kids or, I mean, you could probably just imagine, like it's hard with kids to continue to connect every single day. And so we are so excited to just get away. Just the two of us, we are getting tickets to like three shows we've been wanting to see because you guys know we love theater and musicals. So that is kind of our basis. And it's so funny because we love going to New York and going to like 
cutesy, like off the beaten path, coffee shops and restaurants and all that. But so many people like look down on like the main part of New York and like seeing Broadway shows and stuff. And I'm like, that is a huge reason why people come. Like, especially if you love theater, like we love it. Last time we went, we, I was pregnant with Felicity and it was like a baby moon. We did not vlog it. We just enjoyed and it was so nice. But we stayed near time, not right in Times Square, but not far because we wanted to be able to walk. And with me being pregnant, I didn't want to have to walk too far. And we did a lot of walking on that trip. But after the shows, he knew I'd be tired. So we wanted to be really close. And it was totally fun staying in Midtown and being like right near there. So I know a lot of people are like, oh no, you got to stay in Chelsea or the village or, you know, the Upper East or West Side, whatever. And this time we're staying closer to Central Park near the Upper uh, East Side. So that's going to be fun too. But my point is, you know, there is something to be said about staying in the center of it all. It's so fun. Yes, it's touristy, but there's fun in that too. So especially if you want to be able to walk everywhere. But we did that trip. Um, pop down to Brooklyn. That was super cool. We got to see Park Slope and um, do some shopping down there. And then we also were in like the Dumbo area and ate there. So we definitely got out and we went up to Central Park and um, ate some breakfast in the Upper West Side. I always have to think. <laughs> um, so we definitely got out from that region. We went down to Chelsea for a meal um, or was it the village? I don't know. So we definitely got around. I feel like I'm like explaining myself. <laughs> Because I know some of you New Yorkers are going to be like, oh my gosh. But I'm just saying, we enjoyed the touristy part too, okay? Oh, oh, I wanted to use this little Kaja trio. I've had this a while. It's the Chocolate Dahlia, but I forget about it sometimes. So we're going to do a little shimmer. I often skip the eyeshadow step lately, but I'm going to throw a little shimmer on. Why not? It's a Friday. Friday. So come fall, we are planning to take the girls to Europe. That is very much a big question mark on exactly what we're doing, but that is to come, assuming nothing changes. And that's a big one because we haven't been to Europe, of course, since pre-COVID. And it's funny, Tyler's still editing those vlogs. So one day soon, you will see our Europe vlogs from November of 2019. Remember those days? And uh, Gigi was like, a year and a half when we took her to Europe and it was quite an epic, awesome trip. And I can't wait to see those vlogs, but it's going to be weird because I'm going to be watching them and Felicity's nearly that age. And so it's just, it'll be weird for some of you guys to see because you'll be like, whoa, like I feel like even Tyler and I are so much different. Any hoozle. And then we may do um, pre-vlogmas this year, maybe in November, go to Disney World for Christmas. So we've got lots of Lots of plans and we've got like little staycations probably within there or like little road trip weekend type things. But yeah, those are our, our big upcoming plans. Oh, here's a fun question. Do you like hot or cold coffee more? I mean, it depends completely on the scenario. I would say I like hot coffee for sure in the morning. Like starting with iced coffee is very weird to me. When I was pregnant with Felicity, I had to because I could not stomach the idea of hot coffee, but I, ha I had to have at least a cup. <laughs> Yeah, I think generally, like if I could only drink one kind for the rest of my life, I would pick hot. I know that for sure. But like in the afternoons, I like to have cold coffee, of course, in the summer or like when we're out and about shopping, I definitely prefer having a cold iced coffee versus hot coffee. But yeah, it depends on the scenario. But generally, like if I had to have one hot coffee or at least warm. <laughs> I feel like me actually drinking hot coffee is pretty rare. I'm always reheating it. Okay, lots of questions. So to update you guys on the basement, it is nearly done. <laughs> there is one more thing that our neighbor has to finish. We are so, so close, but we have been, I mean, it is very usable. I mean, the thing that's left is very minimal, but we are so close and it is so lovely. And I know Tyler is planning on filming the tour of it very soon, unless something changes. I am pretty sure he had it like next week to film it. So. It's coming up and we are very excited to share it with you guys because I know a lot of you guys have just been here for the whole journey. It has been quite a journey, but it looks amazing. It's even better than what I envisioned. And we've got like now we have this like kitcheny bar area, if you will, that's got, um, it doesn't have a sink or anything because we don't have water running down there, but we just got like a nice remnant for the top and it looks so nice. They installed that recently. We've got our nice little fridge down there that I've got all my like sparkling things and... Um, Juice, Gigi's got juice boxes down there. She's so excited when we have like movie night, she goes and gets a little juice box. But um, yeah, it's it's awesome. So that is to come. It is basically done and we absolutely love it. Putting on all this eyeliner, I might go on a run in a little bit. I got a question from one of you guys, like how do you work out with makeup on? I'm like, I just do. I don't, 
I don't know. Because usually, like, if I'm working out and the girls just got home and we we're trying to do dinner and it, I don't know, it's just easy to just pop down and work out and not really think about the makeup because I know a few hours later I'm taking it off anyway. Um, but, like, if I were going first thing in the morning, I don't put on makeup and then go to the gym. Like, I just, but if I already have it on, I, I just don't wash it off, you guys. I know that's probably terrible for you, but I also know I'm not alone on that. So many of our neighbors have golf carts and they're just riding around. This, by the way, I used the Sephora 12-hour liner to tight line, and then I used the Danessa Myricks Line Work liquid liner. I'm loving this liquid liner. It's really easy to use. And then I'm going to use the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift while I answer another question. Are you guys gardening this year? Yeah, Tyler, actually this morning, I'm in charge of flowers, he's in charge of the vegetables. So um, I have vowed to be a better flower mama <laughs> this year. And so far I have been a flower queen. I have been taking care of them, pruning them, watering them, fertilizing them. It's funny, I started off really terribly because we bought two hanging plants and I did not water them enough and they died. And hanging plants get weirdly expensive. And it was like past the point of no return. So we have fresh ones, RIP to the first two. Now I know, and they are thriving. So I'm learning, but I vowed, I was like, I love flowers so much and I want to be better at it. So that is, I'm vowing for this to be a hobby of mine for me to actually do, you know, look stuff up, make sure I'm taking care of them properly and try to, I'm trying to learn my flowers. So he is doing the garden and I made some little signs for our garden. It's looking so cute, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's good. We were just kind of at the beginning stages of it. He had already planted uh, peas cause you plant those in colder weather. So those have been out there and they're doing really well. We've got some marigolds around it to hopefully deter some critters and creatures, we shall see. I have this breakout here that is just killer. <laughs> you ever have one of those that you just like, ooh, man. But we really simplified our garden this year. We had so much in previous years. We were like, all right, what do we actually use, eat, and cook with? And so we really pared it down. The main things are um, like beefsteak tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. We definitely eat those. I love a juicy, tomato on sandwiches, especially with our new panini press. <laughs> oh, it's so good. There is something about like when you have a slice of cheese and you know, your lunch meat, whatever, and your tomato and the cheese, like because of the panini press, it gets warm. So it like melts with the tomato. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, zucchini is something we actually cook a weird amount with, which we just based on a few recipes we really like. We make bibimbap a lot. Did I say it right this time? I've been trying to look it up and say it right, but I feel like I didn't. Anyway, and then uh, we also use it a lot in our puff pastry pizza, which we had last night. <laughs> if you want that recipe, I will link the, it's from a recipe book. I'll link that below because um, it is 10 out of 10. We eat it every other week. <laughs> I do love that mascara. All right, we're getting into some new stuff here momentarily. Well, we can go ahead and start with this. So this is the, um, new Jones Road, is it called? Yeah, tinted face powder. So I have the untinted, like translucent, whatever, and then this pink one. And I wanna try this pink one. I, when I saw the PR like stuff on Instagram, you know what I mean? Like the release stuff, I thought it was a blush and I was very excited about a loose blush. I don't know why, I just was. It is a face powder, so it's gonna kind of brighten, you know? So we're gonna test that out on my under eye. Cause I figured this is kind of the, spot to do it, you know? It's hard, because I know the lighting is different on both sides. It definitely, like you can definitely see a little bit of that pink tone. So if you wouldn't want that, I mean, you can definitely see it, which, you know, sometimes the pink ones, you really can't tell that there was like a pinkness to it at all. I'm gonna kind of spread it out a little bit, because I feel like it's almost obvious that it's just right in that area, you know what I mean? It definitely like flattens the area. It sets it nicely. I mean, I don't have any complaints. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I feel like it's more brightening than others. They have other colors in this line, um, but the powder itself, the formula feels nice. I just wanna mess around with the pink and see how I like it. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and I, I'll be curious to see it in other lighting as well. But I definitely like the Jones Road aesthetic. I feel like there've been a lot of products from them I really didn't like, but this one I'm hoping is one that I actually do. So far, so good. I wanna use, this one's like not new to me, but kinda, this is that Earth Day, um, like thinner butter bronzer that they released. 
and I love the packaging and I wish they would just redo their butter bronzers to always be in this thinner, doesn't have to be the Earth Day packaging, although that's very cute. I kind of shot my stash for this one. I have not used this in so long. This is a new Jones Road brush that's like, I think it's their powder brush, I'm assuming. Yeah, powder brush and it's super nice. Um, and I always struggle with powder bronzer that's like pigmented like this with what brush to use because sometimes it can just be too much. And this is actually doing a pretty good job. I just always feel like this shade of the butter bronzer, this is the light, is just ever so slightly orangey. And it really, I don't know, it might be time to get rid of this because I just don't love that orange tone. I really don't. And it can just look really... You see what I mean? Like, it's not terrible. I love the formula itself, but maybe in the future, I'll just get the butter bronzer shade. Like, I think that one's just slightly less orange, which is nice. How do you structure your day working from home? I'm starting soon and so nervous, but excited. I have definitely, and you will probably, if you're starting to work from home, go through phases of you'll try one type of structure. Parts of it might work, parts of it won't. So you'll start over you will try a lot of structures and I don't know that I've ever really hit the one that works perfectly. In my mind, I'm always like, like literally weeks ago, I was driving and I was like, I've got it. From this hour to this hour, I'll always film with it within those hours and then I'll take a break for lunch, eat lunch and make sure I like actually stop. Cause a lot of times I'll like do a working lunch. I'm like, no, no, Jessica, thinking about taking a rest, take your 30 minute lunch, actually eat lunch, sit in the backyard away from your phone. Then in the afternoon, I'll do emails and I'll work on this and then I'll do that and do invoices. It's always best laid plans, even within a loose structure, but it's so hard when reality sets in and a certain email comes in that you're like, I'm only gonna answer emails at this time. But then one comes in that's a little more pressing or something happens like, it's so hard. But I do think having some kind of structure, especially if you're someone that thrives on that, is key. I typically do thrive on that and I still haven't found that structure. So it is what it is. I definitely do better when I have less time to work. And so sometimes when I have the whole day, like today is the day I have the whole day, I find myself almost stretching my work across the day to fill it when really what I should be doing is getting it done because then I might have other time to do other things, other projects before the kids come home or whatever. And that's something we do. If you haven't read the book, Four Hour Work Week, I don't agree with everything in that book, but I think there's a lot of valuable um, advice in there. And that is one thing he brings up. It's kind of like a gas. It, it will expand to take the shape of its container. It will fill the shape. It's kind of like what we do with time. When you have that amount of time, you're gonna fill that amount of time with work. You'd get the same amount of work done probably in a few hours as you would in eight hours. And I do think for a lot of us, that is definitely true and I'm definitely guilty of it. So I'm trying to be better. That's kind of been my goal the next few months this summer is really using my time wisely because I'd rather spend that time with my kids. So Tyler and I have talked a lot about like, instead of doing whole work days, doing half work days, um, or at least I could, he has a lot more he has to get done throughout the week because he doesn't just do YouTube, he has his travel, there's a lot more. But even for me, like having the kids watched for half the day so I could maybe pick them up at the half day mark, get all my work done in the morning and then be able to take them to the park and spend more time with them. Cause that to me is my goal, but that's a personal thing. You know what I mean? Anyway, I hope you guys know, it really does feel like I am talking to a friend on here and it's so nice. And obviously I don't talk about everything under the sun because I do keep some things private and they're just, you know, I've, I've learned a lot of lessons being on the internet for 10 years that some things are just better left unsaid, unspoken about because I do feel like my channel is a place a lot of people can go to get away from a lot of that stuff. And I want an escape from a lot of the stuff going on. I really do. And I know a lot of you guys do too. And that's the reason it's been very intentional that I don't talk. I do talk about a lot of things. There's no doubt about that, but there are certain things I just don't bring up all the time because I don't want to. I want a respite from it. I know a lot of you guys do too. So I hope that's okay with you guys. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Cause I get a lot of questions about certain things and I'm like, I just don't want to talk about it. I want a break. <laughs> Felicity update. Has she said a first word? Is she walking? Um, she's not walking yet as of filming this, but she's doing that knee walking and it is so cute. Um, but she definitely, she'll stand for a few minutes and I'm like, oh, she's so close. Um, I always get questions about like how you get over like, you know, kids not meeting milestones in time. I'm gonna use this lip liner. It's the L'Oreal Colorish Matte. This is new to me. Ultra Creamy Glide Velvet Matte Finish. It's in the shade Mastermind. If you know, you know. Um, but 
looks really nice. I'm, I don't think I've tried this. Oh, wow, it is so creamy. So, so creamy. Oh my gosh, you, look at this. I'm just gonna color in my lips. It's so creamy. I try not to stress too much. Like the first kit is the hardest when it comes to milestones. I just don't check it anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like the first, I feel like first few months of Felicity's life, I was definitely checking those kinds of things. I just don't look into it anymore because the reality is I'm like, she'll get there. And in some ways she's been faster. Like she was faster at learning all the different cup types. Like she can drink out of a straw, out of virtually anything. And Gigi, it took forever to teach her that. With Felicity, she just like did it. I don't know, I didn't even. And that could just be a second kid thing. It could just be a Felicity thing, but I think half of it is if you don't need to know, then don't look it up. Early on, that's easier said than done, but especially as they get older, like I feel like most people, <laughs> my friend Emily and I talk about this a lot, like when kids turn one, the, the question, everyone that you ever have seen ever when they're around the age of one is, oh, are they walking yet? And it's, I know people don't ask it as like a, you know, mean thing. It's just that people know around one kids might start walking. So it's almost just more of an easy conversational thing than it is. And, but I know like when you're the parent, you're like, no, they're not walking yet. Especially when it's your first and you're like, oh my gosh, should they be walking? Like, should I be encouraging it? Am I doing something wrong? No, kids will just walk when they walk. Like I'm, they just will. And so anyway, I could go on and on about that, but I just think a big part of the battle is just stop checking. Just stop checking. If you are someone that is bothered by them not meeting milestones, if it's a big deal, your pediatrician will let you know. Otherwise, you don't need to know. You know what I mean? So anyway, I feel like I went high on this side. I really liked this lip liner. It was just so creamy. I guess I'm overlining because I've already done it, so. Anyway, and then I'm gonna throw on the Revlon. Oh, no, 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 I wanted to try this. That I do love this though, the Revlon Super Lustrous. The gloss in Rosy Future is a fave. But I wanted to try the Tower 28. I think it's their lip butter. Oh, 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 okay. Well, I'll put it on, but I might want gloss anyway. This is, there's not really a lot of color to it. It really is more of a sheer. I was thinking it was like, I don't know, different. I've seen these, I tried these. This is kind of a nice product though to um, put on if you do just line the lips because it just adds in some moisture, but not a lot of color. Actually, that's kind of nice. That's kind of a nice summertime lip trick because sometimes in the summer, it's hot and you're sweating and it's nice to have a lip product that's not that's still moisturizing like this, but if you want your lips to be a little more filled out, just color them in with a lip liner, put a balm on top. This is really comfy. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. So Felicity's first word, we really are not sure. I think her first real word was high because she says that and means it like she knows what she's saying, but she now says dada and mama and she's dabbling in nana and papa. She says Gigi for Gigi, which is so cute. She also says cheese. They sound similar, but she uses it in the right context. <laughs> so she is just exploding with words. I think her her strength is gonna be communicating over like physical things. Well, I say that and she, again, she's doing things just a lot faster than Genevieve did. And I think that's more of a second child thing. What have you been reading? And will you and Tyler do a book update like in Vlogmas? Let me pull up my Goodreads. We have been reading a ton. We are planning on very soon filming a halfway point, halfway through the year book update together. And that will probably be on Tyler's channel, um, which I can link his channel below. I always have it linked in the description box if you're curious. It's a lot to do the entire year in December during Vlogmas like we always do. So we figure halfway point is perfect and then we'll do the other half of the year come December. Sorry, my nose is so stuffy. Not for the faint of heart, I am listening to the audiobook of This Is Going To Hurt. Um, and it's a an OBGYN doctor in the UK that um, basically shares his experience and journals from his, you know, first, I wanna say like his decade being a doctor. And it is fascinating, it is not for the faint of heart and it is not family friendly. So just keep that in mind. I mean, he's an OBGYN doctor, so he tells a lot of stories. It's definitely one of those books that if you are expecting, it's not a good time to read it. But it's very interesting and it's given me a different viewpoint, but it's also funny. He's very funny. So definitely enjoying that. I'm flying through that book. I'm almost done. I read Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. That book is longer than I thought. Um, I was reading it on the Kindle and I didn't realize, I'm like, ooh, why is this taking me so long? I'm like, oh, it's longer than I thought. I did not love this book as much as I think other people did. My friend was saying she didn't either and she's super into video games and, and it's about video games kind of. And for a while it kind of felt like a love letter to video games. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cute. Like if you were really into it, but I don't know, the story took a turn that was just such an odd turn. And then it just, I don't know. I, I didn't love it as much as I thought it did and it didn't end the way I wanted it to. And so 
it's totally a personal thing, but I, I didn't love it. I know a lot of you guys loved it. A book that totally surprised me was Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. I, I listened to the audiobook of this and him reading it is really good. I would definitely recommend that. I, I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I've, I think I've seen him in one movie, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. But of course I've known who he is and his voice, like the way he would say stuff would sometimes bother me. But for whatever reason, this book totally blew me away. And Tyler read it too, totally blew him away. Our friend Ben read it totally blew him away. So it's just one of those books that like, we all like very different books and we all loved it. Like that was a five star, just a lot of like life things. Again, not family friendly, but very interesting. I was so surprised by how much I liked that. But yeah, I've read a lot. I don't want to go through it all because I'll save it for that um, movie, but I enjoyed the book Hotel Nantucket for a beach read. It was just a fun, light book. If you've ever been to Nantucket, you will really like it. Um, because it's definitely someone that knows Nantucket, um, really well. And yeah, I just enjoyed it. Another good beach read is Every Summer After. That is one that is just, it's, it's just a good book. Like it wasn't favorite book I've ever read, but it was just a good love story, um, slash beach read. Anyway, I'll stop there. But yeah, those are some suggestions. Hopefully you got something out of that. How am I liking the Vessi shoes? I'm still really liking those. Are, if you don't remember, um, I could pop a picture of what they look like on the screen. They're supposed to be like waterproof shoes, but here's the problem. I wore them in Disney and they were white. And I was like, this is perfect. They're just gonna be comfy to walk in all day. They're waterproof in case it rains. They got so dirty the first two days. I tried to wash it while I was there because they're washable too didn't make a dent. So I brought them home, washed them here, and I really used like spray and wash or whatever on them. And it helped, but they're still all stained. And I'm like, that was from like two days of wearing them and it wasn't even raining. I'm like, how did this happen? So I was so bummed. Um, I might reach out to Vessi and be like, yo, what what is the deal? Like, I don't, and I, I'm sure it has to do with the fabric that it is, but I didn't do anything strenuous or weird. We weren't work, walking in like dirty paths. We were just walking on concrete and through an airport. like. So it was such a bummer. They're definitely a lot cleaner now and I'm still gonna wear them. But like I said, I might reach out to them and just see what they say. I think if you got a color that wouldn't show dirt as easily, it'd be fine. Cause they definitely are waterproof and they definitely are comfortable. I've gotten, I wasn't gonna answer it, but I've gotten so many questions. So did y'all make a conscious decision to cut back on alcohol? I think there's a big movement going on right now. Um, there's a reason that there are so many non-alcoholic beers and wine options out there. I was just at Kroger the other day, which is, you know, like a smaller-ish chain of grocery stores in the Midwest. And the amount of options of just non-alcoholic IPA beers that are out there, I was like, whoa, like two years ago, these options were not here and they are everywhere. There is a new non-alcoholic store. Like that is all they sell is non-alcoholic stuff that just open and they're opening another location. Like there's definitely a movement I think to cut back. Um, we don't, we don't abstain completely, but we just try to be choosy about it. I feel like we were definitely living our lives where it was easy to drink a glass of wine a lot throughout the week. Like, you know, in the evening, okay, let's have a glass of wine. And I'm not saying this is not me judging you, please. If you enjoy a glass of wine every night, I don't think there, I really don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I just, we both kind of felt like, you know, with having kids, we're already tired. It just makes us more tired. And we felt like it was easy, like when you would have one drink to have a second drink, and then you're like, oh, well, maybe I'll have a third. I just feel like for a lot of us, you hit a point in adulthood that you're like, okay, I'm not 21. I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not in college. I'm not just out of college. And so you just kind of have to make a decision where you're like, I don't want this to be the basis of like why we hang out with people or the basis, like we wanted it to be that we're hanging out with friends to be with friends, not just to have glasses of wine or not, you know what I mean? And so it's not to say like, we still hang out with friends and have a drink with them, but we definitely just drink less. And I feel like health wise, it was a really good decision for us. Um, just across the board, it's been really nice. Of course you save money, you know what I mean? You buy that stuff less. So. It has been one of the best decisions I think we could have ever made. And it's funny at times, like there were times that we would do things and be like, oh yeah, and when we get there, we'll, we'll grab a drink and be able to walk around with it. And now that thought doesn't even cross our mind. And I never thought that day would come. And again, it's not like we were drinking so much that it was such an issue all of the time and this, but it really, I am so glad we made this decision. I know Tyler is too. So I think the reason a lot of people are curious is I have a feeling a lot of you guys are curious about cutting back and you know, and of course you're always curious of the why and stuff, but yeah, it's just been great. I think it was just more of one of those, it's it's time. Like it's time in our life, we're adults now. 
we need to cut back. This is not something we need to be drinking all of the time and et cetera, et cetera. So we definitely enjoy it more when we're on vacation and we want to, that's the thing, we wanted to feel that we can enjoy it more during those times or when we're at a nice restaurant, get a nice glass of wine, but just not having it around the house all the time where we're drinking it on weeknights just because, you know what I mean? Not to say that sometimes there is that just because time, but you know what I mean? <laughs> just not as often. All right, camera overheated, had to let it cool down. So I'm gonna answer like one or two more questions and then we're, we're gonna cut it. But uh, this person said, you make travel with kids look so easy, but it's stressful. Any real talk on this? Yes, it's just not. I mean, I know I say this, but I think it bears repeating that anything you're seeing in a vlog is still a highlights reel. I mean, sometimes I'll pop on and be like, oh my gosh, but my point is that I'm not picking up the camera when Genevieve is having a meltdown and I'm not picking up the camera when Felicity's super tired and she's crying and all, you know what I mean? Like there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that you don't see. I mean, if, if you're watching a 20 minute vlog, that means that's probably 20 to 25 minutes of our trip. And if our trip was, you know, a couple days long, then it's such a small snippet of what the actual trip was. And so, I think that bears repeating. Travel with kids is a lot of work. I loved watching our Z Roll, our my our editors actually, um, have a YouTube channel that we love and they also have a podcast and they just talked about travel with kids and they did a whole episode. They just nailed it. So I'm gonna link the YouTube version of that podcast episode below because I think everything they said, I would just repeat. They said it so perfectly. And so if you want more chat, like real talk about traveling with kids and why I, I mean, why I think it's worth it. I know a lot of people don't agree with me and a lot of people think like, you know, travel with kids is such a waste of money. They're not gonna remember. It goes so much deeper than that. So definitely give that a listen. I could certainly talk about that more in the future if you're interested, but yeah, that's just to keep it simple, it is not easy, it is stressful, but it's totally worth it, so. Oh, I got a question. What was the binder that we bought to keep um, the kids like art projects in and like keepsakes, certificates, things like that? I'll link it below. It's basically something you get at Walmart or wherever, like a file folder thing, but you can get a set where you can have their name that you press onto it and then it's got labels for the folders. So like kindergarten, first grade, second grade, but it also has like pre-K, awards, like all these different file labels and the file folders, it all kind of like comes together and you put it in that um, thing you buy at Walmart. So I'll link all that I just described below. If you click on it, it'll make more sense what I'm talking about. But best decision I ever made because I feel like that's one of those things that's so hard to know what to do with like the decent artwork. You know, you want to keep some of what your kids make and um, you can't keep it all. It goes in that special filing cabinet, you know. Um, but the good ones, you know, you do want to keep and then there's always those little things like a first tooth or whatever So I'll link that below and I think I'm gonna end it there I hope you enjoyed this coffee chat get ready with me if you want to see some of my previous ones I always put it on a playlist um, That is ordered from most recent so this one would be at the top to um, You know and it just goes back in time So if you miss one here or there, of course, I hope you'll subscribe if you watch this all the way to the end I really hope you're subscribed to my channel. <laughs> this is a pretty personal video to watch if you're like not into <laughs> To my my videos I don't know but yeah I always appreciate if you subscribe I hope you'll come say hey to me over on my Instagram it is at it's Jessica Braun also a reminder that if you are interested in trying out ritual you can get 20% off your first month by going to ritual.com slash 20 J Braun and using code 20 J Braun at checkout again I'll have the link and everything right at the top of the description box for you guys and thank you so much for watching and thank you ritual of course for sponsoring a part of this video and I'll see you guys in my next one bye